You will know that during our previous interview with Sir Ian Taylor, we had both had our interest piqued um, by a newspaper ad that ran yesterday. I read it in the Dominion Post. A newspaper ad uh, by a group called Methane Mitigation Ventures. Now, I originally thought that this was, uh, and it was basically an explanation that we need to change policy settings on methane emissions in New Zealand that if we do nothing about our ethane, methane emissions, that will be neutral for global warming. If we increase them, that would be bad. And if we reduce them, it would be even better. But it said to reduce or to maintain methane emissions while penalising farmers would be crazy. Now, I originally thought this thing came out of Nelson. And I was intrigued by it. Uh, it was signed under the name of a guy called Tom Sturgis. And Tom Sturgis joins us, I think, from California uh, right now. Tom, welcome to the platform. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Yourself? Uh, great. Now, Tom, you're an American running ads about methane gas in a New Zealand newspaper. Just, just lay this out for me. I'm interested in the background and, and who you are. Okay. Well, I'll keep it real straightforward and real simple. I'm a New Zealand citizen. I immigrated to New Zealand in 1996. Uh with my family and I have um, I'm a New Zealand citizen and an American citizen I spent the up until about eight years ago when I had a big health issue I spent virtually all my time in New Zealand and now I split my time and I'm active in a variety of businesses among them I've been a pastoral farmer since 1996 uh, I purchased a series of um, failing sheep and beef farms and have crafted a business out of them called Lone Star Farms, and um, I'm intimately involved in the pastoral grazing sector. Okay, where, where are your properties in New Zealand, your farming properties? So I have six active farms in New Zealand currently. Uh, they're all on the South Island at this point. They're uh, uh, on the Strathtyree, uh, just outside of Dunedin. Um, then up into South uh, South Canterbury, I've got a couple, and i got uh, two up in the Golden Bay area. All in right. my home block, also in Golden Nice, mm -hmm. nice. So, Tom, why the newspaper ads? Who are you lobbying? Who are you trying to influence? Who are you trying to generate interest from? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to actually influence anybody. The objective of this is to inform, and there's a difference in my opinion. And my big issue, I have opinions about a lot of stuff that we could do or should do, and I've actively, just full disclosure, um, I am actively have a commercial venture, which is um, commercializing various um, technologies to suppress methane in the rumen. All right? But that's yeah. not the purpose of this. Okay, what's the number ad, of that, is that enterprise active in New Zealand? Sorry? Is that enterprise active in New Zealand? It is very active in New Zealand. What's it it's called? a joint venture with MPI and Abacus Bio. It's called Methane Mitigation Ventures. Oh, okay. So that is a commercial it's a company. company. It is, it, it's a, it's a high-risk uh, startup. But yes, it's definitely a commercial company. Yep. But let's go back to what I'm trying to do here. What I'm trying to do here is very straightforward. I'll give you an analogy. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use Fahrenheit. Apologies. If the normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees, yep. right? I have a temperature of 107 degrees. I'm in imminent danger of being yeah. dead. Yeah. You telling me I've got a temperature of 102 might make me feel better, but it's not very useful. That's yeah. what we're doing with methane. Methane, methane, is, uh, methane has a short-lived greenhouse gas. It's gone in 12, in 12 years. The methane that gets produced in the rumen is a result of the carbon and the hydrogen molecules that enter the, the rumen when a, a cattle beast eats grass or other forages. Inside the rumen, it gets broken down, and it gets, what gets re released is a gas that forms in the rumen called CH4, and that's belched into the atmosphere. Yeah. The way the government officially announces it, they say it's 40% of our greenhouse gas. In my opinion, yeah. if we use the more accurate statistic, it's about 65%. Yeah. That greenhouse gas doesn't last very long. You're talking long about New Zealand here. No, only New Zealand. It's yeah. New Zealand's GHG from the rumen is disproportionately high yeah. compared to any place else in the world that I'm aware yeah. of. Yeah. yeah. All right? 
So where am I going with this? Where I'm going with this is that if we have a steady state system, if there's not a, a large difference in the number of stock units grazing year to year, we're neither increasing nor decreasing our greenhouse gas from, from, the rum, from ruminants. In the event that we increase the number of stock units, the amount of greenhouse gas is going up, the, the, the potency of that is about 84 times as potent as a like amount of CO2. The wow. number we're actually using to measure that's about 20 times. Yeah. We're 4x understating that. Yeah. Here's where it gets more pernicious. That same arithmetic is what's driving the ETS scheme. So there is no real environmental benefit, in my opinion, for at least the first five or six years of planting a plantation pine forest mm. and that plantation pine forest will sequester carbon dioxide mm. over its its lifetime and we're all familiar with that and there's a carbon credit that gets yeah. available for that Could, tom can tom can it, i just right? can i just pause there for a moment what percentage sure. of climate of greenhouse gases globally does new zealand produce so I'll go to the, if you go to the bottom paragraph of my mm. my point Sweet bugger all, okay? Yeah. yeah. But, but. <laughs> you have you clearly see, spent we, some time here, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we have sweet bugger all. That, however, New Zealand has the position historically of battling way above its weight in world trade, in the United Nations, in being a shining light and a beacon that other people can look to because we are small and nimble and talented. When we put our minds to things, we can, do, we can do something about it. New Zealand has the opportunity to show the rest of the world how to handle methane from ruminants. Will that solve global warming in the world? No. It's probably about 12 to 14% of the current uh, global, global greenhouse gas issue we've got. There are 1.1 billion cattle on the face of the earth 1.1 billion mm -hmm. only 6 million of them are in New Zealand all right but if we can show the world what we've done with our 6 million yeah. the rest of the world can become fired about what they can do with their 1.1 sounds like virtue billion. signaling to me tom it's not virtue signaling it's virtue doing there's a big difference okay okay this isn't preaching this is doing and leading this is leading. Okay. So, Tom, what, what to would you hope the outcome of yesterday's ad in this campaign would be? Is it, uh, are you going to float the shares in the company or what? Absolutely not. No. The perfect, the, my most favorite outcome would see the a right arithmetic used when we reward or punish farmers for behavior and we recognize that the technology for meaningfully mitigating methane does not yet exist in the world, period. I will tell you from the coal face, there are at least six technologies I'm aware of that are being actively developed mm. in New Zealand. Yep. And we have got in vitro, which means in a, in a, uh, in a test tube, we can reduce up to 98% of the methanogenesis that happens inside the rumen in a glass test tube. In vivo, we're on about 60%. Mm -hmm. Are they economic yet? No. Are they commercial yet? No. Does that mean that they're not going to be? No. All right? But let's not whack our farmers and, and sell off good productive farmland. I, can, I make about 2% return on assets out of my farming business. Yep. I can convert that instantly to 15%. By, by and an awful lot of forest. people are. An awful lot of arable farmland in this country has now got Pinus radiata on it that is uh, bugger all use, Not as you would say to anyone, and it's filling out rivers and it's falling over and it's leaching whoa, the stories. Whoa, 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 whoa. You haven't seen anything. You haven't seen anything. They're talking about 10,000 hectares. Right now, I will tell you, I could... I could add, I could uh, put, I, got, I farm 15,000 hectares. I could put, say, 5,000 hectares of appropriate farming of average to marginal farmland into Pinus radiata and six, $60 million in my back pocket. Wow. You think I'm going to make $60 million out of farming no. 5,000 hectares? I don't think so, right? So, so we've I'm got to also ask the farmers. And I guess yeah. maybe the government and policy settings have to lead, lead the way 
And that is, Tom, we say, let's keep farming at the level we're having and let's work on technologies that make that farming less methane emitting. And maybe then yes. we could over time even increase our, our herds or, or our livestock because we'd be more methane efficient. Maybe then we could start cutting up down some pine trees, build some, um, the stuff's pretty useless from what I understand, or build some houses with it and get some yes. more land back into production for a hungry world. Which, that, that, that is a possibility. Another possibility is if the government feels it's necessary why not do a Dutch auction and have the government acquire the least desirable farmland from a farming standpoint and say, look, we want, we, we're budgeting to pick up 15,000 hectares of, of farmland and put it into forestry as a country, right? Yeah. The crown's going to hold a, a bid. You want to sell, sell it. Right now, it's open slather. Yeah. And, and we're going to get swamped with farmers who are going to, I feel a bubble coming. Really yeah, good. okay. Well, the only way policies are going to change if, is if someone in Parliament introduces a policy change and implements it. What the is first your... start is to use the right arithmetic, though, Sean. Yeah, yeah. The first, let's use the right arithmetic when we're keeping score. And right yeah. now, and my reference for this, if anybody's interested, in the IPCC Commission yeah. on page 1021 lays out the science where this yeah. stuff's coming from. This isn't allowed now. Wasn't it great? Wasn't it great that they've come out and said they expect maybe two and a half degrees Celsius temperature rise by the end of the century that they've revised so drastically downwards their computer models? I, I, I'm not qualified to comment. Well, well, no, it's, it's been, been widely reported now. The IPCC, just before the latest COP conference came out and said we've looked at the modelling, we're only, and we're now talking about you know, ad adaptation to climate change, but our eight degrees by the end of the century is way off. Five degrees is way off. We can expect maybe up to two and a half degrees Celsius, which is a, a completely different scenario to be operating in, isn't it? Um, th that's, I'm not arguing with you or against you on that. That is good news. Yeah. It doesn't mean we don't have a big problem right now. And yeah. It in, means we've got a smaller island, problem than we had, though, Tom. Yeah. Yes, if, if that's, yeah. It oh, yeah, means we're news. not, as so you we'll said, do. going back to your Fahrenheit and personal body temperature, yeah. Um, yeah. it means we're not going to get a fatal, a fatal fever. I, I don't, I'm not qualified to comment on that. Yeah, well, I, no, I, I would have thought, I would have thought, I mean, it's a UN report for good news. I would news. hope so. Yeah, yeah, it I, is a I United so. Nations report. I would hope so. So, Tom, how do you measure success of this campaign? Or you're off flying a uh, kite in the hope that someone, someone sort of picks it up. By the way, Sir Ian Taylor is really interested in talking to you, if you know who Sir Ian is. Yeah, yeah, I do. We've gotten some really interesting feedback that's meant to be a useful addition to the debate. Yeah. That's all it's meant to be. That's, you know what, Tom? My, it is so goal. refreshing. It is so refreshing to talk to a person who says, we just thought we'd throw that out there and it's, and it's interesting and we hope we can help and everyone can discuss it because so often... These days, it seems to me, on climate change or vaccination or COVID-19, people will take absolutely fixed position and say, I'm right, everyone else is wrong, and really, you should just listen to me, and you don't seem to be taking that approach, approach Tom. The approach I use in business is we create a team, we look at a problem, we figure out the arithmetic as well as we can, we develop hypotheses, we try a lot of stuff. What looks promising, we double down on. What looks doesn't look promising, we kill. And it's all about the team moving forward to win the game. Yeah. That's look, what I do. Look, I just want to read a text I've got from someone called Dave. I have a lot of listeners called Dave. Sean, methane was never a problem. It's able to be measured and therefore taxed. We fix the perceived problems, though, and the goalposts get shifted. And I, many I talk to in the agriculture community just get the feeling that climate change really is just a stick with which um, sort of anti-capitalist globalists beat their industry over the head with. I, I could, you said it's a feeling. I'm sure it is a feeling. It's a feeling of frustration. It's a feeling of despair. It's a feeling of not being listened to nor appreciated. I get that. It doesn't change the fact we have a real issue in front of us that we need to resolve. And closing our eyes isn't going to make it go away. Arguing that the numbers aren't quite right isn't going to make it go away. And I'm, I'm dedicating 
significant amount of money to figuring out the technologies, me and a whole bunch of other people, figuring out the ways to make it better. But destroying an industry in the middle of doing that is, is foolish. Tom, I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time. When you're back, I take it you're having um, the holiday season in the United States? Yeah, I am. A little bit of a health issue too. So All I'll right. be back well, in New well, Zealand in a few weeks. Well, good Thanks luck much. with that. And I thank you very much indeed for uh, talking to us uh, this morning. That is uh, Tom Sturgis. He is the founder of Methane Mitigation Ventures, which is a commercial enterprise. He took out a full-page ad. And uh, look, how interesting. Someone who's not literally screaming from the rooftops, he's got enough money to put it out there in the Dominion Post and the mainstream media. If you are in the farming section, what, a sector, what do you think of what he had to say? And I think he was quite brutally true. Um, you're a farmer... You've got arable land you're using, but you can make an immediate sugar hit, multi-million dollar hit by selling it into, you know, turning it into forestry and selling it off. With all the greenies coming at you, why the hell wouldn't you? Why the hell wouldn't you? Sean, methane is released by trees. Gorse is probably number one. Okay, but I don't see the gorse plantations that they're doing for the ETS, do I? Um... Can I just say this is a particularly nice text? Sean Plunkett, you put up with extraordinary abuse on social media. I'm sorry about that. Well done with the platform. You're doing a very good job and doing it well. Have a great Christmas and a butte 2023. Cheers. Thank you very much for that.